more than wool, a sheep. In order to have an adequate management program within an agricultural company, it is essential to consider the animal's psychological state and its phases of development. Even though each phase of life is treated separately, it is important to unify everything into one calendar so as to have an adequate record-keeping system. Now let's see how we best handle the breeding of our commercial sheep in areas such as mounting, lactation, and nutrition. These models of reproduction allow us to have an adequate control over the mating females. We have two lots at the moment with both Katadin and Peliway males. When the breeding male enters the mounting lot, he's painted with methylene blue. After the male has mounted the female, the female is tagged with a collar, keeping the record for the farm's internal registry. These females mate with the males for around 36 days. Afterwards, they go to the gestation lot, and here they are given an ultrasound on the 35th day. The females who are not pregnant are given another chance and are taken to the revision lot. They spend the same amount of time here, only with different males. During the last two months of gestation, the sheep have many needs. For this reason, it is convenient for them to stay relaxed, exercise little, and to follow a special diet. During this time, it's also important to shear the sheep and implement a sanitary protocol that includes vaccination and deworming. It is very important to increase our sheep's body weight before birth. It's appropriate to use foods that are rich in energy and low in protein, so as to guarantee weight gain in our lambs. The females that are closest to given birth are placed in a stowing corral. These are registered as mounted and have clear signs such as full udders and a nuanced vulva. The day we visited this breeding farm, we had the privilege of contemplating one of nature's most beautiful moments. An event that took five months in the making. During the mating season, it is essential to count on qualified personnel, since complications can arise during some parturitions, such as malposition of the offspring or an offspring that arrives too big. This system of breeding guarantees that there will be a maternal recognition between a mother and her young. During its first six hours, the offspring will consume an adequate diet of colostrums. After this, the technician acknowledges the offspring by registering it and disinfecting its navel. The number of offspring born to a mother is related on the latter's nutritional base. The females can give birth to one two, and up to three offspring. For multiple births, a special diet having to do with the quantity and quality of the food the animal needs must be given. The ewe and her lamb remain in the parturition zone for five days. Afterwards, they are moved to these elevated corrals where they will remain from 60 to 90 days, which is the breastfeeding period. During this time, the females must be able to supply both their own needs and that of productions as well, making it important to guarantee a diet that will encourage milk production, since the ewe can produce an average of one liter a day. In terms of the lamb's nutrition at this phase, mother's milk is the one fundamental food and the only one capable of meeting its needs during the first part of its life, where growth occurs quickly. These corrals have the advantage of having a creep feeding where the lamb can eat the concentrate 
and in this way, we begin to stimulate the rumen. In these stowing corrals, we can divide the multiple births from the single ones, this way guaranteeing a special care for births with multiple offspring. The structure of these elevated corrals allow for a daily, easy, and comfortable collection of feces, which are then reused as fertilizer for the cultivation of moringa and fodder. When the lambs are 30 days old, they are moved from the elevated corrals to the ground corrals, where they will continue breastfeeding until they are weaned. They still, however, eat from the creep feed, where they consume concentrate of approximately 20% protein. The system of creep feeding guarantees us an adequate consumption of concentrate so that, once weaned, the lambs are at an ideal weight. At this moment, we are accepting, on average, 20 kilos for female lambs and 22 kilos for male lambs. Our lambs will remain in a feeding lot until they are brought to an average of 35 kilos when they are approximately 5 to 6 months of age. The females are kept in order to continue breeding here in our farm. Yeah.